Me tattoo. I'm here with Danny. Uh, absolutely amazing artist, which we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. So obviously, I'm teaching people how to tattoo. I've got my online course. So what, how is this video going to benefit you? Well, you can learn a lot by watching other artists, see how they do things, and learn from other people, which is obviously the whole idea of the course in the first place. So that's the reason why we're going to try and quiz Danny a bit, see why he does things a certain way and just get a few insider tips to somebody that's been in game for 10 plus years. I think he's got, is it nine artists that's in your studio? Yeah, we've, we've, we've had 11 as a maximum. We had 11. I was running a studio of 11 artists as well as being a full-time tattooist as well. So, uh, but we're currently at eight. So he's got eight artists in shop. Now I've typically always worked on my own and found, and found that better for me. So we'll drill some questions and see how that's affected him as he's doing my tattoo. Uh, but first of all, I think one of the main things is, like, from my point of view, how did you get into tattooing like in first place? So I was, Keen on tattoos on myself. So I was actively going to tattoo studios in the area. I couldn't see past the end of my nose. So I would just go to studios local to here. And I was often let down by these studios. The artists would turn up drunk in the afternoon. They'd been on the piss. Or what they designed was just dog shit. And I thought this isn't what I want and you know and I was never ever happy with how I was treated as a customer so eventually I just thought you know what I can do this better than you and so I started to explore that and initially I wanted to get the apprenticeship because it's the safest route in at the time the safest route into be tattooing at the time there was no YouTube back then there was certainly no online courses like Ben's. Um, I don't even think there were any tutorial DVDs or anything. There was nothing, so it was apprenticeships. So went around to all these same studios, dropped my number off with, uh, I think I took some of my school artwork and was like, look, I can draw. Can I have an apprenticeship? And they were just like, fuck off. <laughs> Literally. How, how many did you try that to? I must have done five or six studios. Like, that's clearly not enough, is it? See, you'll have to mind because I'm just on my phone. See, everybody that's on my channel knows I, I, I must have gone to about 15. So I just want to say thank you because mo most artists, even as you're getting tattooed like we are now, when you're trying to ask them questions, or how do you do this, can I, can I film this little bit? They're like gatekeepers to industry now. We, we've all spoke about this quite a lot, so it, it's good, to, Danny, to like share with me and, and obviously all you uh, inside secrets, so to speak, because there's so many artists out there that are like, no, it's trade secrets, I can't tell or discuss with, with anybody. Yeah, so one of the common things that artists said to me, what I started to do was, because I'd shown an interest in tattooing, if any of my friends were going getting tattooed, I would go with them. And I would sit with them and I'd quiz the artist. I'd say, what's this? You know, I'd look at the setup here. If you can see it, like, I'd say, what's in there? And what's in there? And what do you do that for? And they'd just literally say, I'm not telling you. Because I know what you're going to go and do. You're going to go and set up, do it yourself at home or whatever. I said, well, give me an apprenticeship then. I'm clearly keen on it. They were just like, no. Um... And none of these studios that I went to back then are even open anymore. Uh, I'm going to put it down to the fact that they subscribe to this old, territorial, selfish, unwritten rule, closed book vibe that a lot of old tattoo studios did subscribe to. And I mean, the reason me and Ben get on so well is because we disagree with that. Um, Ben's self-taught, I'm self-taught. I've taught nine apprentices, nine. And I did it because they were genuinely nice people and I thought, um, I actually want to help you. I've learnt these things, I've got a gift 
and I can share that with you. So that's why me and Ben have clicked because we want to share the gifts that we've learned and the selfless aspect of adding value to other people. Ben through courses, me through apprenticeships and subsequent courses on that. So just a quick one, Dan is just in process of building a, an online course. Basically, he's had nine apprentices. He gets, what, five, six messages? It must be, yeah, it must be five or six requests for apprenticeships every day. So the de there's a demand for people who would still like to learn this traditional way. So he's constantly getting asked. And likewise, it's a daily thing, especially when you've got a busy studio. Um, people wanting apprenticeships. Now, a lot of people on my course, they're either going and opening their own shop or some are then wanting to still work in someone else's shop, almost like an apprenticeship, but with the skills that they've required from the course to then still have that bit of guidance on running the shop and just for a bit of self-confidence. Well, Danny's actually building a course on how to get a tattoo apprenticeship, how to stand out from the crowd, because most of us already know, like I say, I went to 15 different shops when I were looking for a tattoo apprenticeship, and I just got turned down by them all. Um, so the, the like rocking our shit to come by. So having, having the know-how of exactly what a tattoo artist is looking for in an apprentice is something that's worth its weight in gold, and that's what Dan is putting together. So if any of you are interested in that, I'll put links and I'll put I'll be putting posts on over the next few weeks anyway. So once all that's built and it, it, and it, it's all launched, I think he's going to put some codes together and have a pre-launch. Basically, same as what I did with course, where it'll be cheaper uh, to start with. Yeah. So did you end up having a an apprenticeship at all, or did you just go straight into doing it yourself? No, I, I grew impatient and I didn't really have a full-time job. So I just decided it's time to just, it, it, I've got to do this myself. And at this point, I would then be the ideal candidate for the course that you run. I would have just done that and taught yeah. myself, but it didn't exist, so I didn't. So I chose to just go down a route that I wouldn't advise anymore because you don't need to. And that was just to buy a cheap kit off eBay and just crack on by myself. Uh, fake skin didn't even exist then. You guys have got the real skin, which uh, Ben supports because it's amazing. And I just had real, real skin on <laughs> fucking on idiot friends of mine that were just going to let me practice on them. So uh, yeah, I made lots and lots and lots of mistakes and trial and error because I didn't have a mentor, whether it be online or in person. Um, and what me and Ben are trying to do, because I've seen some of Ben's content, is try to just let people get to where we got, but without making all those mistakes. Because a lot of those mistakes that you will make can be off-putting. And I dread to think the amount of talented people, artists, that could have been incredible tattoo artists, made some mistakes early on and thought, fuck it, it's not for me this. Whereas people like me and Ben can now get in the way of that and actually go, ah, ah, just go back to the basics, something that Ben always champions. And, uh, and you'll get there eventually if you just follow the steps. So, yeah, I went from my spare bedroom and I'm quite a tenacious person. If I do something, I see it through properly. That's just uh, the type of person that I am. And I, I just stuck with it day in, day out, morning, noon, night. Uh, my parents were coming out onto the landing in their underwear in the morning and there was people fucking queuing up. There were people queuing up in cars down the street to get in the house. Uh, and then after, I think maybe 18 months of just doing it alone at home, and I still wasn't very good at all, uh, someone approached me on Facebook and said, I'm opening a studio. Would you like to come and work for me? And that was the start of my journey of into studios then. So obvi obviously now, Dan's shit hot at realism. That's what you, that's what you're known as, isn't it? Realism artist. So 
when did you start doing like realism at, at what stage so being self-taught again this is hurting him on, I'm, on his, <laughs> I'm on his elbow guys so fucking killing. you might see a few of those a few of those teeth picks of the, I, nah, it's not even hurting I'm just pretending yeah I attribute the, the reason why I got into realism is because I uh, did just sorry guys because my fucking arm's killing yeah oh that's the reason, better the reason I think I got into realism was because I didn't have a mentor, I didn't have anyone telling me how to do what Ben is telling you lot. This is a needle, this is the configuration of that needle, and this is how you line. Now drill that for months. I'm saying drill that for months as I'm drilling a line in his elbow. Um, so I found it easier to just draw pictures with the shading needles, the mags, uh, and it was less it, it was less technical and less things could go wrong when you just, let's say for example, I'm just drawing a rose with some mags and I, you don't really blow stuff out with shading, do you? I just pick, it was easier to just, to just go down that route. And then, I, and then just organically, I'm fucking good at it. So I just stuck at it, that style. So one of the things that I try and advocate on course Obviously, of course, we cover loads of different stuff, horror, Egyptian theme, flowers, uh, obviously all portraits towards the end. But that's to just broaden your learning and your abilities and also to, to reiterate everything that you've been learning on the course. But also so you can try different styles and see what you, one, obviously enjoy doing, um, but two, to see what creates like a flair in you as an artist and you'll find that you you automatically like zone into one specific style and i don't know whether dan will agree but i think you've got to be known for a specific skill just for instance and i, I think i've mentioned this on a few messages um if if you're wanting your, your teeth whitened and there's two dentists in front of you. One's a generic dentist, the other one is a specialist teeth whitening dentist. You're gonna to go to the dentist that specializes in what you want. And I think that translates into the tattoo industry. So if, if you're very good at a particular type of style, stick with that and become well known at that. Because and then you can market yourself really well in that one specific area. Almost if you're like a jack of all trades, then Although you, you've got a bigger audience, essentially, you're limiting yourself because people would rather go to a specialist in whatever area they want, or that's my view on it from a marketing standpoint. Yeah. Um, the other thing, how, how do you I find... Do, I, do, I do agree with that, mate. And just one thing. So I've, I've, I've just stayed as a generic jack of all trades, okay? I've never been out of work, ever, but I've also hit creative ceilings you find yourself doing what they want as opposed to what you want and when you do what they want and when you do what a lot of other artists are capable of you will then hit a ceiling on what you can charge for your work and also in a, in, a, in an era of social media uh, what you're following will grow to it'll only grow so far if you can just do generic tattoos like lions and roses and blah 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 um, there's not a set of designs that I could put out into the world. Now, a little story about that. Recently, I've upped my prices and the first person to inquire was somebody who wanted a specific thing. Now, I'm a jack of all trades. I can actually do that thing. So I said, yes, I'll do that specific niche thing for you. This is how much it is. And he said, okay, can you show me some more of this type of work that you've done? And I said, no, because I've not done it before. I don't actually niche that thing. Yeah, so we yeah. went, all right, I'll have to leave it. So he didn't want to, even though I'm fully capable of doing it, I'm the dentist that does all sorts. <coughs> he wanted to go to somebody who specifically did that thing day in, day out. So yeah. that's, that's, that solidifies what you're saying. Man. 
So on that. Yes. Yeah, so, so doing your course and studying and having the abilities to explore different styles and pick one is definitely the way to go. I, I, I recommend that one. So a lot of people on course now is either working in somebody else's shop or there's so many of you and it, it's like a, a massively proud moment for me because there's so many of you students that are opening your own shops, flooded with customers, and it's like a, a massive, not a pat on back for me, but it's like fucking hell, my system that I spent years creating is paying off, but not just for me, obviously people buying the course, but for the actual students that have followed the course that are now living a lifestyle that a year or two ago were just a, a dream, a, like a fantasy. And, and that's awesome for me. But I've told you what it's like from my point of view, uh, running a shop. Now I've never worked in anybody else's shop, but that's just one angle. That's just my opinion. So do you want to just elaborate a bit on your pros and cons of running your own shop? Obviously you've got loads of artists in here as well. Yeah, so my experience of working in other people's shops, I've worked in two other shops. One of them was a rough shop on a high street opposite a pub that was a football pub. So there was loads of fighting and stuff and sh shootings and stuff. So it was, it, I, I got to see the bottom. You're right, Ivan, Mexico. You're right, bud. Mexico. So um, I've, I've seen that end of the scale where you can't charge much because it's a rough shop. And I've also worked in a very, very prestige shop, but it was owned by a businessman and not a tattooist. So they were, they were lacking in some other areas. Yeah. So I hated the first one because it was rough. I hated the second one because it wasn't managed well and they were taking too much money off me because to them it was just a cash cow, you know? They were just trying to take money out of it. So what I thought was, I'm going to open my own and not only is it going to be great business, it's also going to be great to work in. And that's why through my lessons that I've opened a place that just didn't take long to have 11 people working it because they were attracted to it. They're like, yeah, I like the way you do things. So I'm just going to come and work for you. Um, and what was the question about, about this this place, what it's like owning your own shop? Yeah, so pro, pros and cons of owning your own. What it's like, obviously 11 artists, eight at minute, but you, you've had 11 in past. Fucking hell, that must be a headache yeah. to me, if, if anything. Because you've not just got your own problems, you've then got to worry about everybody else as well. Yeah. So, there was just, first of all, there was just me. And then I took my brother out of college and he came and worked for me. Uh, and then there was two of us. And then someone else came along and then there was three artists. And someone else came along, I had to extend the shot. So it, it's, it wasn't uh, just a sudden flux of people that you've like organically grown. I would just say over time naturally. Every three to four months, someone new approached us and what, they were mostly juniors and they wanted just a bit of nudging guidance. to get to guidance to get to where they wanted to be. So then there was four of us, so we had to extend the studio and then another person came in and there was five and I thought, this studio is not big enough anymore, I need a bigger studio. So then we came to this location at the moment and there was five people working here. I had to manage these five people, get a receptionist, manage the emails, manage the admin, the accounts, the this, the that, the other. And there was a point where I burnt out because don't forget, I was working six days a week as well and tattooing and then trying to go and nudge this lot to go and do all their emails. There was a point where we had 300 unread inquiries in our email box. And at that point I thought it's time to get a manager. So, uh, let's say the pro so the first pro of owning your own studio is the fact that it's yours the freedom the, of it it's mine everything in this building i've decided to put it there and as a creative person who likes creative i'll just quickly music. say danny's shop is absolutely unreal once we've discussed everything that we want to talk about if, if it's all right we'll have a little bit of a tour everybody's busy tattooing so we can't interrupt them but 
we'll have a little bit of a, a walk around. It's absolutely unreal, this place. Yeah, so a, a, a pro is you get to do things the way that you want to do them. Um, but with that comes a lot of responsibility, um, a lot of policing the artists that do work within the shop because they have to abide by your core values. Um, and I say this about everything in life, about parenting and business and all sorts. It's easy to run a shit business if you just don't care. But if you give a shit, it's hard work. Yeah. If one of my artists is half an hour late, I'm tattooing here, grinding my teeth because it's pissed me off all day. Now, if this wasn't my studio, I wouldn't have to think it, but I want that responsibility because I want this place to be a success. So it's kind of a pro and a con at the same time. Like it is a distraction. But if over the years I've developed streamlined systems for the business that have made it easier for me. So there's not really any cons at the moment because I've got a manager in place who gets paid well and he does a great job. If anything breaks, printer stops working, which happens all the time. Um, you know, a bulb goes out or an artist is having some problems with um, getting booked up, the manager's on it and he speaks for me. So he knows me that well that I don't even have to liaise with him anymore. He's just, he might as well have a, a mask with my face on it, you know what I mean? He yeah, speaks that's... for me. Uh, and I trust everyone else who's in place. So, um, so the massive pro is that it, it's yours, it's your baby and you do it the way you want to do it. And the con is... The biggest con is that not everybody who works within your business cares about the, the business and its reputation as much as you do. So you will have, you will expect, because if you open a studio, artists are, or juniors or apprentices are gonna come along and say, can I come and work for you? Not one of them gives a shit about your business, even if they say they do. The only everybody. So the next big question: How many artists have you had in here that you've had to sack because of that attitude? Because they're not bothered. So I. I've, or they're just not listening and following advice, or having respect for you as a business owner and shop customers. I've had to let go. About. No, not let go. How many have you had to sack? Sack. <laughs> I've sacked three. Three. In how many years? Uh, 10 years, it's not bad. Yes, that's either. not bad going. I've, I've respectfully shook hands and let people go because they weren't aligned with our core values. And I have a higher slow, sorry, higher slow fire fast policy. Of course I'm having a tattoo. Somebody's just putting comments, are you actually having a tattoo? So, yeah, we're, we're filling the arm in, there's cover-ups all in here. I had mismatch. Just basically shit everywhere. So Dan's really good at covering up and uh, not something that I particularly do at all. So hats off to him. He's, he's took on the challenge, which we'll have a little look in a bit. Um, one of the things, if you could give advice, obviously you've, you're creating a course that, that breaks down and you've You've broke it down into five or six steps, haven't you? Yeah. If there were one thing that you could say to anybody that's watching, that wants to go work in a shop, they've never done it before, what's one practical bit of advice that they could take away today that would help them along that journey? Just yeah. one thing. Uh, it's very, very easy, that. The number one thing that I would tell you, if you want to do work at anybody's studio, get an apprenticeship at somebody's studio or just get any kind of opportunity with anybody is that everything in life, everything is a value exchange. So before you go somewhere thinking, what can they do for me? And what do I want out of this? The first thing you need to consider is what's in it for them and what can I offer them? If you've got nothing to offer them, you better go away and work on yourself until you have, otherwise you're not gonna get in, you're not gonna get through the door. So let's take my apprenticeship efforts back in the day, for example. I'm walking into a tattoo studio with some photographs of my fucking 
high school A star, uh, what was it called, a GCSE, saying, hello, I, I'm good at drawing, can I have an apprenticeship? Where's the fucking value in that for that guy? There wasn't any, and that's why I didn't get the apprenticeship, and that's why the course that I'm developing is going to teach you all about the mentality of uh, the person who's on the other side of the door of that tattoo studio. And that leads to a really good point that not every, irrespective of whether you're really good at drawing, you could be the best artist on paper. From a tattoo artist point of view, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to make a good artist. Because becoming a great artist and a well-respected or well-known artist is not just about the capability of drawing. It's everything else that comes with it. The dedication, turning up on time, speaking to customers right, doing your bookings, advertising, which for all, all you that are on course, you know I'm creating a, a full marketing uh, program that you, you can all jump on and that'll be covering all that. But there's... The, the actual artistic side, obviously it's the bread and butter of being a, a tattoo artist or, or getting into the tattoo industry, but it is just a small proportion. There's everything else that's equally as important as the job itself. And I, I say this in, especially marketing side, you can be the best artist in the <clears> world, <throat> but if your marketing is not on point, you've got no customers. And that, that's the same with any, any business. I've sat or let go people who were fantastic tattoo artists, world class, hundreds of thousands of followers. I've got rid of them because they forgot that this is a value exchange. Every day it's a value exchange. And they were on the take from me and I don't take any shit from anybody and I'm not having anybody sucking the life or being a bad apple within my business. So if you don't understand that it's a value exchange, I would rather lose the income yeah, and get yeah. rid of you. So if I can do that to someone who's got hundreds of thousands of followers and brings mega bucks into the business, I'm certainly going to do that for a fucking junior or an yeah. apprentice. I don't, I'm not asked. My life's going to go on whether you get a career or not. So, but if you try and understand my needs and what I'm looking for in a person, which is exactly what... I don't want to plug my course too much on your channel, but that's exactly what my course is going to cover. What am I looking for as a mentor? Then you'll do well. So obviously most of the people on my channel, they're all aspiring artists, they're driving new to the game. Apart from all you guys that have been here since the beginning, that are opening your own shops. But for anybody new that's just started watching, if you were to give Again, just, just one valuable bit of information to anybody new, artists, from a tattooing aspect, not an apprenticeship aspect. What advice would you give anybody that's wanting to become an artist? What's your best bit of advice? So, this is somebody who wants to become an artist but doesn't want the apprenticeship. They just want to be a tattooist. It, it, either or. Just yeah. the, the, becoming a tattooist in general. It might be the mentality behind it. It's got to be. Putting in the hours. Yeah. It's got to be something that me and I know you have done very well. And no one told us to do it. We just did it because we wanted it. First of all, how much do you want it? A lot. We all had shit jobs in the past. And we didn't want any more shit jobs. So we really wanted this job. Um and it's the dedication that you put in, it's the hours that you put in. Yeah, totally and, agree. Uh, for example, I've had people, I've got people here at the moment, and this is a good example of um, seeing that people are not dedicated enough as we were. It gets to 3 p.m., uh, they finish the tattoo and they go home. What the fuck are you doing going home? There's another like eight or nine hours of this day left. Yeah. Get on the computer, do some drawing, do some marketing. You're running a business, you're a personal brand, and you think you can just go home. Whatever you do now, the work that you do now, the work that you put in now, reflects how busy you're gonna be in three to six months time. So if you decide to just piss off at two in the afternoon because you've finished your touch up or 
you've you know you've done some socials or whatever, um, then in three to six months you're not going to be busy than you and you're sat there scratching your head wondering why. It's because you've not put the work in. You've not been dedicated enough. <clears throat> uh, me and Ben are from a generation where when we were kids it was half term holidays in school. It was going working on building sites and and that's kind of got faded away now because of health and safety on it I think paper rounds for me from being yeah. a kid and milk round paper <laughs> round milk round selling sweets on the fucking on the uh, cigs at school yeah selling <laughs> selling cigs at school I used to sell fucking you know cl- clipper cards off buses I used to nick yeah I used to sell Eddie them. I've had them whitened mate that's how my teeth are so white so my uh, my number one bit of advice to anyone who wants to be a tattoo artist is that this is not going to be easy. It's going to require long hours. You're tattooing a living thing that moves, that has opinions, that wants to ask you every question under the sun while you're trying to um, concentrate. It's going you to be like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It keeps whinging on, about the pain like that. Fuck off, I've been an animal. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> so on, on that note, I think that's a really good point. And I also cover that in my lessons um you have got to be determined from day one whether you've purchased my course or not you have got to be prepared to put in the time put in the effort put in them hours because it, even if you've not got the skills at the beginning we can work with that we can teach you skills but what we can't give you is dedication Work you effort. you've got to you've got to have that yourself and if you've got that, then you can be moulded and turned into an amazing artist that goes off and opens your own shop with masses of success because you've got the drive and determination. Anybody with the skills, but without that drive, that lacks the mental capability of wanting to push and do well and succeed, I think that's something that you've either got or you haven't, and it's hard to install that into somebody. And that that's... One of the things that I can't give you in the course, I can prompt you in the right direction and try my best to motivate you and give you the structure and the lessons in the right order. But you've got to want that drive, that ambition, and to to go off and, and make it happen. I can't do that for you. I can just show you the skills that you need. I've got a I've got a saying, and it's something I apply to my, my own life now. Is, do it, or don't fucking do it. Yeah. Do you want to do it? Right, we'll do it then. Or don't do it. Do it or don't. So, one of the things, obviously for all students, I'm going to quickly show you what we've been working on. And then if you don't mind, I just want to zoom in so they can just see what you're doing. Dan. It does it without even thinking about it, really. But he's constantly using Magnum to create lines, which we're covering in course. He's constantly swapping body positions, if you watch. And he also... He's got a, his own unique way, really, of packing in colour that we're covering in course. But I've been quizzing him before we obviously started fucking this, this live. And how he, how he explained it was really good and I quite liked it. So when he's packing colour, instead of having the needles straight, which I'll get him to show you and explain in a minute, um, he has his machine like slightly, not at 45 degrees, but maybe 20, 30 degrees. And that's so as you're creating your circles, the needles are overlapping each other, or even if, if you're brushing just forwards and back, the needles overlap and it, it packs the colour in a lot quicker. So obviously from a tattooing aspect, you're creating less trauma to the skin. The quicker that ink goes in, the better for the customer, the better for the tattoo. It's going to heal a lot better because you're creating less damage. So camera's going to fuck about a bit because I'm just going to bun up it. Just two sec, bud. Just so I can show you this a little bit closer. You'll have to apologize. I'll have to apologize in advance because been rushing about. I was supposed to fetch all camera stuff. And I, I was tattooing yesterday. I, I stopped at Danny's last night. We went out for some nice food. I, I had a good cow till early hours this morning. And I'd forgot half my camera stuff, so I'll just flick it round. So this is what we've been working on. There's loads of cover-ups under there. 
just point them out because I can't. So under here, there's a teddy bear somewhere. And we're just having a full arm of filigree and just filling everything in. It's going to come right up and then I'm going to have the same on my leg as well. Yeah, two seconds. So you can see how, how, he's, how he's done it. It's got to take shape to the arm. So you can see it fits around elbow nice there. It flows around back. There's high contrast in it and start pointing away, Danny, and talk through why you've done things. I've got a fucking one hand. So there's some cover-ups here of what's been lasered. This skin was really tough. Um, we've outlined the top of this hand to frame it. The hand tattoo just kind of drifted off into this. So we've put that top in to frame it, so he's now got a hand piece. And then what's really important with any design is contrast, and that's dark and lights next to each other. So look, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. It's literally like stripes. And what you're going to get there is if you do that well, you're going to be in a supermarket uh, queue paying for your food. And then from a distance, people are going to be staring at it because they can just see this giant contrast from a distance. And then that draws them in to go, let's have a look at that. Look at this part here. Huge contrast there. I'm, I'm not finished this part yet. I'm going to drop a bit of shade in here, but I'm not going to go anywhere near the tips because I want the big area of light and a big area of dark next to each other. So that's what we're working on. That's why I'm in fucking pain. So I'll jump back over here. So do you mind me just getting close up and just talk through that blocking in method that you were showing me earlier? Right, so this little section here, I'm just going to block that out because light light and i'm going to do that dark in the middle for contrast because then from a distance this section is going to stand out and what he was talking about is you see the end of that just also as you're as you're stretching the skin because it's you're doing a three point stretch there you've not been doing that for most of the tattoo have you you've just been pulling down with your other hand Pulling with palm of your hand. Most of the time. All these videos that you're watching where they're saying a fucking 23 point stretch, you've got to include your toes as well. It's bullshit. As long as the skin is nice and tight. Some people you barely even have to stretch because they've got good skin. Ignore any videos that saying you've got to pull it so fucking tight you're ripping it off them. You don't at all. Yeah, this skin here is really tight anyway. So all I'm really doing is pressing down. Yeah. With that and that, I'm not even pulling apart. I'm just pressing down because it's tight. Here, it contours around this edge, which is quite loose skin on the elbow. So I am going to hold that and then I'm going to put my hand there and just pull it a little bit. That's what a two point stretch. One, yeah. two. Yeah. That's enough. So, what he was talking about with the needles, I don't know if you can see the end, is if I brush this just square on like that. You're going to see needle marks and I'm, and I'm going to have to work it more and more to fill them needle marks. Whereas if I just turn it, like you said, 25%, the needle... I'm just going to, I'm just going to twist camera around to the other side just so you can see it from side angle as well. Yeah. So just put needle the same. Yeah, so I'm going to go, instead of going down it like this, brushing, I'm going to turn it slightly come down it like this so hopefully you can see what he's, he's trying to say and what that's doing it's just closing the gaps between the needles which packs the color in first time which causes less trauma to the skin and you'll get a better heal because when you move to real skin you've got to consider that this thing is alive now i'm not trying to pack this thing black I am trying to pack it, but not black. It's like a gray shade. And what you should notice, if I've done it right, is that that's pretty solid. There's no needle marks in that whatsoever because I did it on a degree angle. And then I'll just go in and just, because it is a curved mag, so it'll just miss the edges. So I'll go in and just tickle the edges. Now I like to have the needles out quite far so that I can see them hit the edge. Because as Ben said before, with my realism, I like to uh, draw the edges with the mags instead of a liner. See this? I can't quite get in there with this mag, it's too big. So 
And I'm just gonna <clears throat> make it a touch smaller. That was a 27, and this is an 11. I can get in now. Not only that, I want this to be a darker than this. This needs to be darker than this. So I'm gonna go in tight packed circles. Again, just with the dark gray wash. And there it is, full. And then it's a matter of just tying that in with these now. Again, I'm doing that just on a 25 degree angle brushing because I don't want any harsh lines with this mag. So. There's a lot of stuff. Ben's actually putting me through my paces, isn't he? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that I do. I've no idea. He's been asking me, why do you do that? I'm like, I don't know, I've, because it fucking works. I've been drilling him today, saying, so what type of shading method are you using at the minute? <laughs> and because it, it, it's hard as an artist to to try and explain what you're doing. You just do it. And that's why it took me three years to actually develop the course because I had to strip everything down thinking, right, so what is my hand doing now? And why is it doing that particular movement? And what's that movement called? But unless you've spent ages thinking about it, when somebody asks you that, like I've been asking Danny, all right, so what, what type of shading are you using there? And he says, one that works. Because <laughs> you know I mean? he hadn't had to sit and think I'm explaining this to somebody like yeah. I do for you guys on course so to break something down yeah and on that that course that Ben does I have seen parts of it and as I was watching it it made me feel all uh, <laughs> insecure like, shit I don't know what you know but I can still get the results somehow um, so that course that you've got there with Ben is, is actually fucking incredible I was blown away you're not, not going to get that kind of content from anyone else in that depth. And I've seen this guy's planning. I've seen all the diaries and the, uh, the bullet point books and everything. And, and you are seriously very, very, very good hands with that course. I slept at his last night. We had alarm set for five o'clock this morning. I was shouting him at ten to. <laughs> We're not thinking about getting up, Danny. Fucking get up. Yeah. <laughs> We're ready to work. Big fucking bags under my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but just... One of the scary things is, as well, and I'll quickly touch on that. This industry, it's almost got a bad reputation, especially when you're first getting into it and you keep getting turned down apprenticeships. And a lot of tattoo artists, which is why I speak to very little tattoo artists. There's maybe Same. an handful. Same. And me and Danny's actually been sat talking about it because he's in the same boat as me. A lot of tattoo artists, they're like hairdressers. They don't want to help each other out. If anything, they want to tarnish somebody else's reputation to, to almost like grow theirs. And it's, it's almost like the ladder method to get above the person above you. You've got to pull their leg and pull them off the ladder so you can climb up. And I disagree with that. Me too. I think if everybody helps each other out, then it's a better environment to be in. But there is artists, don't be disheartened by that. Not everybody in the industry is obviously like that. There's some great artists and you're gonna make some lifelong friends that have got same goals and ambitions as you. So it, there's yeah. good sides to the industry as well. If, if the hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousand people who've done Ben's courses are in that Facebook group, what you're actually doing is breeding a next generation of yeah. artists who actually want to help each other that have a community. But there's something I want to say about the the territorial thing that you're just saying about other artists trying to drag each other down, right? <clears throat> well, we're not even that far from each other. No, we're not. It's an hour away. But listen, if, if my studio is doing as it is and another studio opens up down the road, which they do, they always will, I'm not about to go and set them on fire because I'm concerned about my business. If I start losing business to them, I think, what are they doing better than me? Are they better at tattooing than me? Well, I better fucking get better then, aren't I? Are they better at customer service than my business is? Probably not, but if that's what it is, I better fucking get better at customer services. And there's an unlimited amount of resources out there on the internet to go and get better at customer services. 
send your friend into that studio and go and find out what they're doing better than you. Or even better, go in and say, hiya, nice to meet you. I'm glad there's another tattooist in the area. I like your studio. Be fucking friendly with them. Break those barriers, man. You don't know who's trained those people. It could be a, a knobhead who still thinks that everything's fucking dog-eat-dog and it's not a dog-eat-dog world. Let me tell you something. that Social media has put everybody next door to each other. It might as well be one massive fucking high street just full of tattoo shops yeah. because social media exists. And you've got people coming from around the world. We've got people coming from around the world. Everybody's next to each other now. If you're failing somewhere or if A quick one on that in comments. Where are all you guys watching from? I know there's Mexico. I think there were Argentine, Argentina. Fuck it, can't even pronounce it. Have we got any Mancunians in? in? Anybody from Manchester? Because that's where we are, by the way. We're in Manchester at minute. Florida. Jennifer Rouse, you all right? Argentina. Sorry, pal, I can't pronounce that. Atlanta. You all right? Jason, you all right, buddy? Um, I don't know whether Mike... So oh, we've got someone from Manchester. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so Australia. You, all you Americans are, are, are being treated to the broadest fucking yeah. English accents. <laughs> it's not all posh here, you know. Greece. I'm at, I don't know whether you've all seen on uh, Hamburg, Germany. You all right? Zucker, is that pronounced right, bud? Um, Reza from Manchester, you all right, buddy? Copenhagen, David, you all right, pal? Romania, Zoltan, Xavier, is that right? Canada. Um, see, mad thing about this is I've, for all you guys that are on my Facebook, I'm going to Thailand for a month, training next month, full 30 days, can't wait. Come back, fresh mind. I'll have been eating right for a full month, training every day, so... I'll be ready to just smash work when I get back. And I'll be making loads of videos whilst I'm there. Um, but e even that, the reach that social media can make. I've had people messaging, saying, oh, we've just noticed that you're coming through to Thailand. I think there's been three or four people message now. Can you bring your tattoo machines? I'd love to get tattooed by you whilst you're over here. And that, that's the opportunities that it's going to give you later on once you've built your reputation. You've been doing it a few years. You're well known in the industry. It's the op it's the lifestyle and the opportunities that it it then creates for you. So you, you can, I mean, Michael, I've been invited to Texas, Cyprus. I got offered a job in Miami, right up on beach. Where else? Mexico. Some of my students have got a dive school over there. They invited me over. The op. The opportunities that you get in this industry. I mean, do you do guest spots or did you? Uh, I've done guest spots, yeah, but I just... I'm just UK coming, based? I've or, done or guest both. spots in Australia, New Zealand, um, Scotland. But to be honest, because this is my studio, I feel like if I remove myself from it, the vibes change, so... I you just prefer being at home? I prefer... Oh yeah, I, also, you know, I've got a little lad who's in school nearby, so it just suits me more to be here. Uh, but tattooing is... There's a it's saying, got to be one of the best jobs ever. There's yeah. a saying, a slogan I've got on the back of my toilet in there, and it says, Tattoo artists mix with all classes of society and are therefore the most dangerous. It's because we meet everybody from the lowest... I've had murderers in my seat, and I've had centi-millionaires in my seat. So... It's Who's worse. the worst person you've ever tattooed? The worst person yeah, I've ever I've, tattooed? Yeah, worst, worst customer. Obviously not the name. I had a guy, the worst person I've ever tattooed was a guy whose pain tolerance was probably negative. Is it negative five? <laughs> minus five, mate. I'm not kidding. When the And he was a doorman when the needle just touched his skin, it wasn't even applying ink yet, he would go, 
<laughs> and it was that bad he gave himself a nosebleed he was bleeding everywhere and, and I had to do a full fucking dog portrait on him <laughs> uh, yeah it was probably the most stressful one but have you ever had anybody quit I've never had anybody quit in no. 10 years no they don't get an option to listen if you quit you're paying me the full day because I've commuted in and this is another thing about tattooing is you're not working for a corporate company that's got corporate responsibilities. You work on your terms. Everything is on your terms. Don't be a dickhead with it. Be a professional. But it's your terms. Hi, my name's Danny Birch. I, t I charge this much. I'm going to do this for you. And this is who you're going to be for me as my customer. These are my terms. Please don't break them. Because if you do, i.e. not showing up, you're losing your deposit, etc., etc., and I'll never tattoo you again, or other things like that. So another, another one of the many benefits to being a tattoo is working on your own terms, building your own career and your own dreams. Right. On that note, my phone's just flashed up, saying that we're starting to run low on battery. These lives absolutely smash your battery to bits. But this shop is epic. Do you mind if we have a quick break and just give everybody a little bit of a tour and explain? Wait till you see this. It's kind of like shop envy when you come here thinking, fucking hell. I don't have this much. Mine's the opposite. I, I've i gone for like less and just like barely anything in, as, as you all know. Just to, uh, but I want to show you around here, it's mint. Before you have a look, another one of my famous slogans is the experience of getting a tattoo is just as permanent and memorable as getting the tattoo itself. Remember when you tattoo a real person, every time they look at that tattoo for the rest of their life, they're gonna remember what it was like. So make it a good place. R&M, my shop's not in Manchester, this is Danny's shop, whereabouts in? It's Greater Manchester, Stanley where is Bridge, it? Stanley Bridge, Bridge in Greater Manchester, yeah. But we'll give you a quick tour of his shop now. Um, this must have took him fucking years to build everything up in there. 10 years. We'll, we'll go have a look. 10 years and counting like it never stops. It never ever stops. We're changing stuff every day. Right, up you get, let's fucking, oh, I'll follow. Thought. Yes, mate. So doing. this is where we've been tattooing obviously in here. This is the old reception room. We used to come in through there before just, we had the <laughs> Just let me show them. It's like Narnia. So we're going through the fucking wardrobe into the next bits at shop. <laughs> people used to wait in here to go and get a tattoo and they're all confused. 15 people stood in here as to where they go next and then someone would just pop up out of this antique French wardrobe. Yes. <laughs> Tell you what to do. Just a quick one about being good to your customers and stuff like that. Anybody that's watching that wants to get a tattoo here, if he doesn't give you the same treatment as me, which means you get to sleep at his house, he'll take you out for a nice steak night before, then you come and get your tattoo. Obviously, he just don't give a fuck about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what we're gonna do, we're gonna cover the camera for about five seconds to get out of the hall and into the reception. Yeah. Yeah, cover it up. Pop it on you. Reception room, but doubles up as a bar. Christmas parties, merch, available designs, amazing ceiling. All the work was done in house. Barber shop upstairs. Coffee bar in the corner. This is the name of the studio for anyone that's not. Design suite. But the best part is through to the studio. Yeah. 
Ça va, qui l'aurait une bonne côté si c'est arrivé Non, bah, 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 So that cyber is industrial, so that's one experience when you come through the door. And the second experience is when you come to this side, which is more antique and it's more like a museum. You can hear piano music, that's because we turn this piano into a sink. And we run music through it, piano music. Like I said, the experience is as permanent and as memorable as the tattoo itself. So when people come here, they go, fuck me, there's a piano sink. Every time they look at their tattoo, they're going to go, piano sink. <laughs> And the attention to detail is really important. Just like Ben's course is the attention to detail. The water jets are in threes, which line up with the three keys. But ben didn't even know it's that many. <laughs> so it's all right, Ben, come on through, mate. The toilets and the piano music is playing in the toilets as well. So when you're having a pee, nice and peaceful. Old bookshelves. One of the big tattoo rooms in here, a quick fact about this room, is that weeks after we took on the lease for this place, we found out my great granddad, who I've never met, worked in there in the 1940s. Wild. Laser clinic. The room we've just come from. Corridor. There's just artwork everywhere. All old, like antique. And then we have two artists in there working full time. And there's another room there with another two people in it, shirtless, so we can't go in there. Respect them. Yeah, this is the place. Upstairs, we've got a barber shop. We do SMP head tattooing, my office where the operations from aftercare company are based. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place. But all this was because I wanted to do it. This is my place and I'll do whatever I want. That's the beauty, it's one of the massive pros of having your own place. It's epic, isn't it? Just totally different to what I'm used to. So I'm used to like nothing on walls or very little. Um, and just less is more because I dread to think I know on some of your videos that you've got is there with duster fucking cleaning everything yeah so it although it looks really nice you've like also created more work for yourself haven't you yeah cool well, more maintenance the, more work for the cleaner <laughs> <laughs> but right we're going to leave it at that hopefully you've all got a little bit of something so thank you Danny for Taking part and fucking sharing a bit of knowledge with everybody. Head over to me, uh, Danny Birch Tattoo on Instagram. Danny Birch Tattoo on YouTube. You'll find some cool episodes that are based in and around this studio. Uh, and I think a little bit of what me and Ben are doing today is going to end up on there. But yeah, this is what it's about. It's about networking. Network is your net worth, is a great quote. <clears throat> You go and work with other artists, you speak to other artists, you pick up on something. One little tip could change everything for you. Whether that's, why well, have you tried using this needle and doing it in this arrangement? And it might change your whole style. You might develop a style out of one little tip that somebody gives you. So forget this whole traditional, what yeah. you call, um, territorial, yeah, unwritten it's... rule bullshit. I said it's much better if we all come together and just come up as a... Uh, as a one and represent the industry better than it has been represented by the media in the past but especially these shite tv shows which is what we're trying to do we're trying yeah. to change that if you haven't already make sure you go over to his youtube channel his editing and filming skills are absolutely shit up he's just been putting some episodes together um which one of them's already on there that covers all what it was like for tattoo artists in UK during all this COVID lockdown. And then he's just, have you, I don't know if you posted it yet. Have Tomorrow you? morning, 9 a.m. UK time. Sorry, Americans, I don't know what that is for you. I'll be dropping a new episode, which is about the day when we opened um, after COVID lockdowns. 
So obviously you all know COVID lockdowns, everywhere was shut for fucking a few years. So what, what were it like for UK tattoo artists opening back up? Obviously it were a bit different for me because I, for years I've just been working on course. So I'm kind of out at loop. I'm just starting back doing odd couple of tattoos for my old regular customers that have been patiently waiting for years. Um, so I've been really enjoying that. And we're at a stage now where I'm almost at a point where I can go back to doing a, a few more tattoos because I've got a bit more free time. For everybody that's on the course, I can't apologise enough for this bit of a delay. Um, for all you guys that I speak to, Rick, my life's just been completely upside down with personal stuff. Um, and it's kind of put a few setbacks, but all that's sorted now. And at, at the minute, guys, I can't think of anything else that could possibly make my life any better than what it's going right now. It's like living a dream. Getting tattooed, finally. Fucking I going here, I, there and every, everywhere. Adding value to other people. Seeing all the success that all you guys that have started course at the very beginning are doing. I was, I was talking to one of my students yesterday. He's just finalised, his shop's all opening. There's other students that their shop's all opening. I'm constantly getting invites to different countries to to go work in shops for a few days, help people out, which I'm definitely gonna be doing next year. Now all COVID restrictions have lifted, or the majority of them. I'll be jumping on planes constantly to try and get out to see as many of you as I possibly can. Um, just a quick one. How many times, somebody just commented saying, how many times did we practice on ourselves when learning? Now, I didn't learn on myself. I'm not a complete idiot. Danny's gonna say he is an idiot, probably. <laughs> I what, did you practice on yourself? I tattooed my own thigh a rope, <laughs> sat in my ex-girlfriend's parents' house in her living room on her sofa while her mum was sat watching daytime TV. Hygiene 101. <laughs> yeah. Ink on the carpet and all and I am due to get those removed, so I don't recommend it. You've got fake skins um, and when you're competent enough and you've put enough effort into your marketing that Ben's gonna teach you, there'll be an abundance of people that want to be tattooed by you if you've got a good portfolio of fake skins. Right, thank you. Um, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you haven't already make sure that you subscribe to the channel go over to Danny's channel as well make sure you subscribe to that he's only just started the channel recently haven't you yeah so it's just getting off floor so everybody make sure that you subscribe and do what we're doing together let's start helping each other out not everybody's in competition. Everybody needs to start helping and supporting each other and grow together rather than compete. So I just need that hand, mate. That's it from me. That's it from me. And uh, speak to you all soon.